Hi guys, this is Crossy of Eclipse Gaming TV and welcome to part 3 of my FM 2014 English Revival with Manchester City. As I'm sure you will have watched the uh, other videos in the series before you got to this point, but to give you a heads up, the plan was, if I can actually get the game up, give me a second, there we go, having an absolute mare. Uh, so the plan was to build a team at Manchester City and use the Sheikh's uh, millions and billions of pounds for good. For the English game and uh, try and revive it by signing as many English players as I could and it's worked out pretty well for us so far in the opening season as you can see on the right here we were uh, runners up in the Champions League lost 1-0 uh, to Manchester United in the final a little bit disappointing really the performance wasn't brilliant by our usual standards which is a shame managed to get first place in the uh, Premier League won it by 86 points um compared to Chelsea's 80 in the end. It was very close um, all the way up until the end, but Chelsea just couldn't sustain those results towards the end. And to be honest, since they held the lead for most of the way, the uh, six-point lead looks way more flattering than it actually was. And uh, also we won against Southampton in the FA Cup. So altogether, that's worked out pretty well for us. Um, couldn't have asked for much more. If we got a win in the Champions League as well, that would be pretty ridiculous what we're trying to pull off. But at least it's a sign that we're stepping in the right direction. I was able to get a contract extension for three years, so the English revival hasn't ended after one season, which is something I was particularly worried about. Uh, just to give you a heads up on how things have turned out. So Aguero, as you would probably expect, as one of the top, I would say top three, top four strikers in the world. Banging in 27 goals, leading Van Persie by quite some margin. Um, did a really good job for us. And yeah, you may well remark that he is not English. As is the highest average rating in the Premier League, Vincent Company, who has got 7.42. Uh, which creates a little bit of a problem for us going forward in that... How do I get rid of these talismans to replace them with English players? And it's going to be tough as the board are going to expect similar results going forward again into the second season. And even though I've got the contract extension, as you can probably tell, uh, it doesn't take much to sack a manager in football these days at the highest level, which is a real shame. So I've still got to keep myself um, right up there as best I can. And also David Silva, who is also not English, leading the way in the assist tally. Which is a little bit worrying. So the three players or three players that have been influential in our push to the top of the Premier League are all not English. And apologies for the little pause there. I am, as you can probably tell, a little bunged up with cold. So, um, yeah, my voice isn't quite what it should be, unfortunately. All right, so let's go and have a look at the uh, team and how... We've gone appearances-wise. So Joe Hart, as you'd expect, played virtually every game that he was fit for. Had a little spell when he was crocked and did his knee in, I think. And we had David James filling in. But for the most part, it's been Joe Hart leading the way. English goalkeeper, that, uh, that helps out quite a lot because there's not a whole lot of choice in that area. And if we had to try and, and sign a top goalkeeper from England, well... We might have had to spend quite a bit of money or develop someone and bring them through. Uh, Michael Richards, 38 appearances, one goal. Uh, again, had injury problems, had uh, an injury, came back for a couple of weeks, got cropped again, was out for another six to eight weeks. But he's got that versatility to play at centre-back or at right-back if we need him. Rated as uh, two and a half stars at the moment and probably isn't going to improve much from that. But very effective, does a job for us. Two and a half stars are sent back as well. And uh, at 25, he's going to be a player that we'll need pushing forward for this English revival, I would imagine. Company we already talked about. 10 goals, 49 appearances. How I play this particular situation is going to be a very interesting one. It might depend on who we can sign uh, to replace him. If we can get a couple of good centre backs, and I've got targets in mind, We'd love to get Stephen Corker from uh, Cardiff if I can, for example. Then maybe we don't have to worry too much. Uh, Nastasic played a, a decent number of games. He's got potential to go all the way and be a five-star defender. Unfortunately, he's not English. I can't keep him. But uh, he managed to get a decent number of starts in there as well. Uh, sort of rotated in with uh, Jolien Lescott, who's 
all the way down here. But he put in 43 appearances and uh, four off the bench and a 7.24 rating. So, again, very much in there. Problem we got with Lescott is he's 31. Not that's a major problem at the moment, but next two to three years, we're going to be looking at a, a decent replacement for him. So I'm going to start thinking about that when I go forward. Uh, Ryan Bertrand, 41 appearances. Signed him for the first team to fill in for uh, Gal Clichy. And also for, uh, who's the other guy? For Kolarov, who was out on loan. Went on loan at Arsenal. Let's see who else we got. Fernandinho, played 25 games. And Jack Rodwell, just below him. I didn't use Rodwell as much as I would have liked. You can see he's putting quite a lot of appearances off the bench. But uh, he seems to be a very effective looking player. I'll have a quick look at his scouting report. So currently two and a half stars, potential to push on to four. Scored some absolute screamers. And I think if he develops that aspect of his game, then he will be very, very useful. He's not quite there yet, but Rodwell seems to de be developing into the sort of Frank Lampard kind of role. And in the next couple of years, we could see him developing into a 15-20 goal a season man from midfield, which would be quite exciting if that happens. So, uh, yeah, a little bit underutilised, which is my fault and something I need to uh, step up on. But I'll be looking for Rodwell to be a, um, a big fixture going forward in the next couple of years for this team. And Josh Townsend, that bit there, the five goal stat, is something I'm going to have to try and improve a bit because he does play in a very advanced role. But 33 appearances, 11 of the, more on the bench. Potential to develop into three and a half stars, uh, two and a half at the moment. So still got some scope to go. And that will push him a little bit behind David Silva, which isn't a bad place to be. And I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this. Um, not particularly well, unless I go through and get the graphs up for the various positions. But Andros Townsend has come along really well in training and has developed well. So uh, hopefully he'll continue that trend. David Silva will be talked about leading the Premiership in assists with a uh, three-goal cushion. And Negredo, 31 appearances, 12 goals. A lot of those came at the very early part of the season when Aguero wasn't really firing on all cylinders. So very effective. Um, Negredo is a player that I rate extremely highly um the real life counts part anyway and it's a shame but i'm gonna have to offload in the summer because he's not english so we've got to turn things around a bit there jacko is another player that's going to be on the way out again someone i rate very very highly in real life and it's a shame that he doesn't get more action for manchester city been saying that for a well pretty much since they signed him uh, to be honest, but again, same thing. He's been a bit part player for us. Most of his appearances have come, or a big chunk, sorry, have come from off the bench. Only got three goals, and uh, he's a player that will no doubt be on his way out. Aguero, what can you say about Aguero? I think the trouble I'm going to have is Silva and company I can probably do without. I could see them disappearing in the summer, but Aguero, I just can't do it. I think I'm going to have to keep holding just for the next couple of years to make sure that I'm sorted uh, going forward. If I do sign an English striker, it's going to mean bringing them forward and, and developing them. There's no one that can really step in and uh, do a massive job for us at, at this stage that I can think of. And Welbeck is a player I'd, I would like to get, but it'll probably cost me a big chunk of change. And while Welbeck has all the tools, he needs a lot of refinement and polishing, which is something we'll have to put in over a couple of seasons. So, chances of me letting Aguero go are fairly slim. Um, you could call that a cheat, and it almost definitely is. But with anything, the importance is also making sure you keep your job and you can continue pushing on with this thing. Clichy, again, uh, 20 appearances, one of those off the bench. Uh, was playing second fiddle to... Ryan Bertrand as much as possible and I don't think we lost out too much by having that switch uh, Tom Ince, 24 appearances 6 off of the bench, picked up a bit of an injury towards the end of the season and missed a bit of action from that but again, um, good little player, very exciting down the wing I've got lots of scope to develop as well so uh, yeah, 
he's going to be a good fixture. And we'll probably have Ince and Townsend as the two wide players as the main partnership going forward. Jovetic hasn't got a look in, um, probably deserves to, but he's going to be disappearing because he's not English, unfortunately. Normally he'd be the kind of player I'd be looking to get some first team action and develop because he's got potential to go on to four and a half stars, but not quite a goer, unfortunately. And uh, Lescott, we've already touched on. James Milner, good utility player, filled in quite a lot of right back this season. Uh, so he's going to be someone that I'll be keeping around. Can slot in in central midfield in either of the wide roles. Lots of scope for him. Uh, so he'll stick around as a utility player, fill in for injuries, cover, um, so come off the bench once in a while. And uh, he's still got a role to play for another season or two in my team. Uh, Sado Berahino. Uh, so he's got a lot of appearances off the bench, uh, 24 and 16, scored six goals. And as we can see from from here, two star at the moment. Uh, he was on one star at the start of the season, so he's moved on quite nicely. Potential to lead into becoming a star Premier Division striker, aka four stars. Leaves him in the same kind of vicinity as Negredo, Dzeko, Jovetic. So not a bad place to be. And uh, he's very quick. And he also seems to put himself in the right places at the right times. And he's sort of the favourite for the tapping in a similar way that um, Negredo would be. Big reason for that is his finishing stat of 15 is not terrible at all. Positioning, well, it's a miracle he's getting himself in the right place because that is non-existent. But if you've got pace and you can put the ball in the back of the net, then that's leaving you in very good stead. And it doesn't really matter if you're in the right position because with those numbers, you can potentially create a lot of opportunities for yourself. So uh, that's going to be that. Uh, Yaya Toure has got quite a lot of action from central midfield. Another player that I sort of relied upon and uh, at 31 and not being English, he's going to have to disappear, unfortunately. Dimakalis played very little football um, looked pretty shocking to be honest and he's uh, already on his way out try and remember where he's gone to Fluminense I think and yeah it is so Demichelis is gone already managed to offload him David James played 12 games for us looking at that well <laughs> it was a sign that I didn't have anyone else um, Pantillimon I let go out on loan because he wasn't English and that left me with absolutely nobody so that's uh, kind of ruined that plan. So Kolarov went out on loan, didn't play many games, and uh, is going to be gone, gone, gone in the summer, if I can make that possible. Not that I don't like him as a player, but for reasons that we talked about, he's not going to fit. Same with Pantillimon. Jesus Navas, 13 games, uh, one goal. Uh, very much like his real-life counterpart, is an absolute live wire down the wing. Very quick, very incisive. When it, when it comes to being thrown goal and putting it in the back of the net, he can't do it at all. And that's the reason he's been limited to uh, first-team appearances for Manchester City in real life, I would say. And, yeah, also a main reason why I tended to put in um, Townsend or Ince in the wide positions. Barkley, well, what can you say about this lad? When you look at his real-life performances, he is absolutely ridiculous, and he's only going to go from strength to strength. To be honest, for us, um, he hasn't put in the same sort of um, performances. He's not been as effective as the real-life counterpart has been, which you would expect, because it's a, very much a stats-driven game, but potentially push him on to a five-star midfielder in the future. So Barkley is going to come good. It may well be another season or two before I can get him to the position of being uh, an ever-present in the first team. But early signs are good. And also, uh, Ryan Ledson now 16. Four and a half star potential for him. Um, he also signed, snapped him up from Everton. And, uh, of course, four and a half star. He's got a lot of potential. Uh, very defensive-minded player is uh, Ledson. And... He's very effective in the role. Um, I put him in for a few games and was very surprised at the age of 15 and with his current uh, stat being one star. And in the Premier Division, he did the job when you put him in that defensive position. He's in there making tackles, uh, stroking around the easy passes and uh, not afraid to get a foot in. Reminds me a bit of uh, what Makaleli used to do way back in the day. And if we get a, uh, a young 
English Makaloli coming through with the attacking prowess of Barkley alongside him over the coming years, then I think whoever the England manager happens to be will be very happy with our efforts. Uh, Angus Gunn, 18-year-old uh, goalkeeper, going to be sort of a two-star once he develops, so nothing special. Probably won't be uh, heir apparent to the gloves of Joe Hart, but you never know. Uh, we talked about this lad already, Denzel. Um, he's actually in a midfielder on the uh, Manchester City uh, website, but he's a striker on this game. Uh, he's got good potential going forward. I think he's a three and a half, four star striker potentially. So, uh, going to keep him out on loan, getting plenty of first team football. Thierry Ambrose, we touched about this in the last part. He's French at the moment, but there's no harm in developing him. See where he goes on. And if he decides he wants to play for England rather than France, then. So be it. If not, I develop him. I sell him on for a decent amount of cash and I can buy an Englishman with him instead. And this guy at the bottom, just got to blow my nose. Sorry about this. Trying to record long parts with a heavy cold is not the best situation to be in. Uh, right, so this guy at the bottom, Ricky McLaren, 15 year old. Now, you remember I showed you that 16-year-old that scored two goals in the uh, trial match against the under-18s? Well, I kind of forgot to save. And I kind of lost that player and went back. And instead of that uh, left midfielder that we got, we got Ricky McLaren instead, who is um, right midfield or attacking right midfield. 15-year-old, same five-star potential going forward. I'm not particularly worried about that because it means it gives me that extra year to uh, put the development in. And you'll notice his rating so far played uh, seven first team starts and two coming off the bench. Four goals, 7.43 rating. This lad has got something. Uh, I didn't manage to get it. Actually, I should have put it on the highlights. But in his uh, debut game, I think it was, uh, for... Let's see, let me see if I can get player stats up. Um... Not sure if this works or not. Not quite as well as I would have liked. But in his opening game uh, for Manchester City, he gets himself clean through on goal and then chips it deftly over the keeper, lobs him and uh, scores on debut. Something pretty ridiculous. And this lad has got the potential to be something special. Already got acceleration of 14, pace down at 10, but he's got that little burst of speed to get him past people. And then with a stat of uh, 14 on crossing that puts him at the same sort of crossing ability well he's already better than Townsend and how about Tom Ince how's he comparing there um, also better than Tom Ince so straight away we've got slightly better quality of delivery coming in from Ricky McLaren than we've got from our two first choice wide men uh, which is a, a great position to be in and at 15 he's got so much more developing that he can do uh, which is great, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that. He's already got a good dose of first-team action, and he's justifying that position as well. Fair play to the lad, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him go forward. Uh, so that's the review of the season. Over the previous uh, couple of videos, I have alluded to some of the transfer moves I'm going to make, uh, but what I will do is I'll leave it here, and for the next part that we do, I will have gone through the transfer window, made the signings that I was planning to make, and I'll give you a run-through of uh, everything that's happened there and show you the team I'm going to have moving forward into uh, the next season. And... No promises or anything, but I would expect when that happens, it's going to have to be a much more English-driven side than we've got at the moment. Uh, some of those biggest names that you'll see will probably end up disappearing and moving on to pastures new. Uh, but this has been Crossy of Eclipse Gaming TV. If you've enjoyed this, feel free to like the video. Any comments or players I should be signing, uh, drop those in the box below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. There's lots of good stuff in Football Manager and other games that will be appearing. Thank you very much.